Hello and welcome back, and that is right, today I want to answer a question that I've heard in the comments, I have heard on forums, I've heard on Ask and Ask Compares, I've heard on the free advice section, I've heard directly via email, where is the 922 and should I buy this, the current DS920? This is probably one of the most popular NASs that some of you have ever released, it was released um, a little under two years ago now, and as we tip over the first quarter of 2022, and we're still yet to get any concrete, full, detailed release information on, you know, a follow-up to this for bay, a number of you are wondering, who are on the fence of buying a new Synology, maybe you're upgrading an old one, or it's your first steps onto the platform, whether this is still worthy of your money and your data, or you should be waiting for a potential DS922. And in today's video, I'm going to give you four reasons why you should stick with this one and go with this as a NAS, and four reasons why you might want to continue sitting on the fence and waiting for that new four bay. Let's go. That is right. When it comes to Synology's hardware, particularly their disk station solutions, even if a DS922 arrives with a better CPU, etc., etc., DSM7 is not going to behave much differently on this system. It will be a question of degrees. There will be very little, or more likely nothing, that the new DS922 Plus can do that this can't. They'll both be able to do exactly the same things in DSM7, from standard file management services, to your integrated multimedia, to virtual machines, to a lot of the cloud synchronization, and more. They're all going to be, in the collaboration suite too, all available on this system. More likely, the only difference it's going to be is the extent to which you can use them, because each device and every follow-up we've seen on the 4Bay from the you know DS14 uh, to the 16 to the 18 to the 20, it's always been a little bit more resources and therefore you can do a few more things at once. You can use multiple services or users at once, just a little bit more. And if that isn't something that's going to matter to you, you're already a small home group user or a single loan operator that's going to use it for the likes of Plex Media Server and more, then this is more than enough right now. And there is no need to wait for a DS922 for that. Price, price, price. Let's be realistic. A lot of you are going into this looking at that price tag there. And ultimately, the DS922 even before a formal announcement of a DS922, uh, this 920 right now is a great bargain in terms of price. Arriving on the market, I think at about, in terms of pounds at least, about 550 to 560. Um, in the t near two years it's been around, that price has not only been listed on everything from Black Friday to Cyber Monday, a Boxing Day to Prime Day, with discounts as low as four to 450 nicker, but on top of that, the average price tag and consistent day-to-day -day bargain prices are out there all the time. Now, to put that into perspective, let's say DS922 Plus was announced tomorrow. If that was announced tomorrow, that price tag is going to be in pounds at least, between 550 and 600 nicker at least. They try to keep quite a rigid portfolio year on year with a few percent increase at the RRP level. So not only is that new solution gonna be more expensive, but it's going to be more expensive at launch and compared to the existing 920. And when that arrives on the scene, this will be even cheaper. So right now, in terms of pricing, yes, a DS92 would probably have better hardware inside and therefore a little bit more resources and it won't be huge jump in hardware. But this, when you break it down to the cost per resource and hardware, this will still be a better choice in terms of pricing. Now, this next one is a little bit more ambiguous and a bit of bet hedging. A number of you were less than chuffed at some of the XS series and business car solutions that Synology have brought to the table in the DS3622 XS Plus and the DS2422 Plus, having slightly more restrictive um, hard drive compatibility policies there. You can still utilize on those systems both Synology hard drives and Seagate and WD hard drives. However, the level of support and the supported services in the system are still a little bit more leveraged towards Synology's own hard drive media, the HAT5300, the SAT5200, and more. Now, currently, the DS920 Plus has none of that. It is within DSM7. All of the services are supported on both Synology hard drives and those third-party ones as well. And there's a very, very high chance that that will not change in a DS922. In the DS922, it's Soho, small home, and uh, prosumer grain. And therefore, 
I think it's highly unlikely that Synology would go down that route and change the hard drive support and policies of services in the system leveraged towards Synology hard drives. However, that's not 100%. That's like, for me, 98, 99% chance that it will not be the case, but it's still not foolproof. And if Synology was to release um, uh, consumer-grade hard drives, such as using the Toshiba N300 and changing those policies at the same time as that of um, the release of a DS92 follow-up, that could change things dramatically. And I think a lot of people would rather have an open compatibility on the 920 than the slightly small chance that the 922 Plus might have a change in policy towards those hard drives. But again, nothing confirmed on this, and I would still say it's highly unlikely to happen anyway. This one applies, I would say, to not only the 920, but something we've seen year on year with Synology hardware releases, and that is when they make the most of the chipset. Now, when Synology sink their teeth into a chipset, or more precisely, the CPU layer of a system, they find out more and more about it and how to cater and change DSM to make the most of it, to get more resources out of it, and ultimately make their platform better for that hardware architecture. We've seen it at them relying on the Celeron processor series. We've seen them doing it when there was the Atom and Deviton series before they moved to Ryzen. They really do double down on this hardware and get the most out of it year on year on year. And because the 920 has been in the market for at least a couple of years and the architecture of that series in both the dual and the four core um, have been really pushed in what it, it can do within DSM-7, we saw it between beta and full release, there's no guarantees that a new DS922 is going to be as efficient for DSM-7 when it does arrive as the 920, at least at the beginning over time, because they've had so much more time to irk out performance and resource availability to DSM-7 in the 920 than any new release coming. Yes, a new release will still go through testing and development before it reaches the market, which still only means that this has had even more than two years of work put into it in that chipset. But there you go, there are four reasons why you should stick with the 920, but that's not the be all end all. There's actually some pretty compelling reasons why waiting on a DS922 makes a lot, sen a lot of sense, both in the short term and in the very long term. Let's go through four reasons why I think you should sit on your wallet and wait for a DS922. That's right, 2.5 GBE, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, which allows on an average port to provide up to, I believe, around 270 megabytes per second. That is going to be very compelling for selling for some of us. Now, let's be realistic for a second. 2.5 GBE is by no means ubiquitous as 1 gigabit Ethernet is. 2.5 GBE is starting to arrive on some ISP routers. It's starting to arrive by default on a lot of prosumer routers, some client hardware PCs and the like that are arriving on the scene. And although it's not 10 gigabit Ethernet, which would muck around with the chipset, use too many PCIe lanes, and ultimately change the entire architecture of the product, I do think 2.5 GBE finally is going to arrive on that DS92. If they don't include it on that, there is something seriously wrong. Synology have already started integrating 2.5 GBE on their router series, the RT6600AX, and it's not the first time we heard them talking about it. So if the 922 um, it's going to arrive on the scene, it almost certainly will feature 2.5 GBE and almost certainly across two ports as well, allowing up to a combined 5 gigabit Ethernet in connectivity rather than the 2 gigabit Ethernet the 920 can provide. And, as mentioned, with more client hardware and more client peripherals in the home and Soho and SMB sector arriving with 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on board, it's going to make things a lot better for you in your internal network, particularly when we're starting to see better than gigabit internet connectivity out there. And the last thing you want is to buy a system that will throttle you to slower speeds than you get externally with a greater than gigabit internet connectivity. Now, much like my hypothesizing of the um, hard drive compatibility and stuff like that of Synology hardware in the future, this is an important one. And I think this is more about Synology, the brand, than anything else. And that is the CPU. Now, had the DS92 been announced by now, there's almost certainly 
the high chance the CPU would be the current darling of NAS Celerons in this sector, in this pricing tier. And that is the Celeron N5105 or the N5095 due to a CPU refresh mid-range change because of the pandemic, meaning that there are now two CPUs running um, side by side rather than it would have happened and been released as a refresh each time. Now, had the 92 been announced by now, that CPU would be 100% guaranteed. However, the fact the 92 hasn't arrived yet and Synology has always been quite sweet on this 4 base series. If you go back over the years to the, when they utilised a Pentium inside it, it was the first system to integrate M2 NVMe before everyone else. I don't think it's impossible to imagine that if the 92 is arriving in, say, summer 2022, that it will have a better CPU. And I think it will be the J6412. Now, this is the next one up. This is a bigger jump, a significant jump over the J4125 inside this. Now, again, I'm not saying anything confirmed. If you watched our hardware predictions video, me and Eddie, you'll know that we've monitored a lot of um, the processors and a lot of the distribution of hardware in the market and we've noticed that that CPU has suddenly started to appear and be purchased in quantity in different places. So I don't think it's impossible to imagine that the DS922 is going to have a better CPU than everyone else right now because it's going to be arriving mid-range. Kinep have already committed to that N5105 processor um, across the bulk of their 64 gen series that's arriving gradually throughout 2022, the first half, bit by bit. And Synology, it wouldn't surprise me if they surprise everyone else by going for that CPU. And that would make that system very appealing indeed. And if that's even slightly true, we hear any indications of that, then that's definitely a reason to hold off on going for that system. Now this stems back to that whole idea of how much you're going to use the system and having enough resources for bigger operations, but this system here arrives with four gig of memory, the 920 that can be upgraded to eight gig. Now of course, there's this whole soldered and not soldered thing with four gig soldered inside by default, but that CPU inside Intel state, it's not um, you know, uh, completely stable uh, if you're utilizing more than 8 gig of memory. They give it an 8 gig max, and the PCIe lanes and how it's spread across would indicate that too. Now, regardless of whether the next-gen system uses that N5000 series CPU or that J6000 series CPU that I've just hypothesized in the previous segment, I will say that both of those CPUs allow a lot more memory, up to 16 gig of DDR4 memory, indeed up to a high frequency as well. Now, that means that if you go for a potential DS922, you're gonna be able to use more memory. However, it is worth remembering and not losing sight of the fact that Synology also have a habit of using soldered default memory on some of their systems. Again, much like this four bay, where four gig is soldered to the board and not upgradable. And even in the two bays, like the DS220, um, that has two gig of memory soldered that you can upgrade with a four gig module, meaning you can only go as high as six gig of memory on a CPU that can support up to eight. So regardless, one way or the other, a potential DS922 will almost certainly arrive with four gig of memory, but you may be able to upgrade it as high as 12 gig, bit of an odd number, or 16 gig overall, regardless of either one of those CPUs there. So again, that may be a reason to hold out for the potential extra memory upgrade it's going to be a bit more of a purchase but at least you've got that option to go larger in that bigger way this last one is more nebulous and does not really apply to everyone and it's about expandability now a lot of users opt particularly business users opt for the prosumer four bays like the ds920 or the 918 the 916 that came before it because of the number nine that's right this four bay can have five bays added to it with a five bay expansion which is lovely stuff why am i bringing this up if it's almost certainly in a ds92 going to be expandable well the big thing to bear in mind there is that if you look at Synology's official expansions, because you have to use their official expansions, and you look at the release years, you notice a pattern. There's the DX510, which was a five-bay expansion from 2010. There was the DX513, which was a five-bay expansion that was an upgrade to that, which was supported by their 
current releases at that point released in 2013. Then the DX517 again was a new five bag expansion that the newer generations supported. They couldn't use the old expansions. Do you see where I'm going with this? The DS922, there's an outside chance it's going to have its own dedicated expansion. Now, why is that important and why should that be a factor for you? Because let's face it, if the 920 can support the DS, DX517, that's still going to be out there. Well, when you look at the expansions and you try to buy an older generation expansion device like the DX510 or the DX513, they're not very easy to buy. Synology start running and producing the newer gen expansion more than the older gen expansion. So if you buy the DS920, which is a great NAS, and it has the DX512 uh, 517 expansion, which is currently available, when you expand three to four years down the line, if the device after this, that DS922, has its own proprietary expansion, and Synology do this refresh thing they do with their expansions, as they've done in 2010, 13, and 17, there's an outside chance that your expansion will be harder to buy and will not be available from first-party brand-new dealerships. You'll have to go second-hand or go to retailers that you wouldn't normally go for. Now, this is by no means guaranteed, but the expandable nature and that, that big appeal that you can expand the 4-bay into a 9-bay system, it's worth bearing that in mind, that waiting for a 922, there's an outside chance that you will have access to an expansion that will be more readily available and produced um, more frequently by Synology moving forward than the older expansions that are out there. It doesn't apply to everyone, but if you were looking at the 9-bay for its expandability, I do think it's worth noting the times of those older releases. But this has been four reasons why you should go for the DS920. It's still a banging NAS and it ticks a lot of boxes, but also four reasons why if you're comfortable on that fence, it might be worth sitting there just a little bit longer. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, chuck me a like. It helps me understand what I'm doing right. If you want to learn more or stay abreast when the new hardware lands, click subscribe, as trust me, it's almost certainly going to be on this platform within days of it being announced anywhere. And lastly, take advantage of the free advice section over at NAS Compares. It's manned by two humans, me and Eddie. We don't do anything with your email. It's answered by us. We don't do any bots or anything like that. We don't, you know, it's a free service. There's donation buttons, use them, ignore them. We use a little bit of affiliated market in there with some retailers. But to be perfectly frank, we just recommend a bunch of retailers that we don't get anything from at the moment. It's just about helping people get in the right solutions. And I recommend you check it out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.